How y'all doing? Back for the Ghost of Podcast. Today's segment is going to detail Browns being victorious, which gives them ten. Which gives well, actually, their record is now ten and five, and they currently are the fifth seed in the AFC playoff picture. Today's game, it was actually. It was, I don't want to say it was, you know, an easy victory for the Browns. It just seemed at times that the Browns controlled this game from the start when they scored, you know, the first seven points of the game. And from there, it just seems like Joe Flacco and Mari Cooper have been, you know, making that type of connection, which a quarterback and a wide receiver, you know, depends on regarding whenever they need to be bell out of a play or if a play breaks down or if the quarterback is in, you know, distress. He is able to find that receiver that he has that type of chemistry with, if that makes sense. And I want to say they set a record today. I could be wrong, but um, going in the stats... And yeah, I'm going to do these stats early because I think they're significant. And I think it's one of the uh, key components why the Browns um, were victorious today, if that makes sense. Um, the Browns are just having, having that type of season where these injuries are just so unique. I don't, it's kind of funny that they are, you know, these injuries are occurring to key, key, you know, key players that the Browns, you know, the, well, should should have depended on this season. And I would like to think most teams would depend on these key components if it were the Kansas City Chiefs, for example, Miami Dolphins, for example, Baltimore Ravens, for example. That's just to name a few. And I'm talking about if Lamar Jackson went out the rest of the season with an injury, where would Baltimore be? What if um, the quarterback, Tua, what if he went out with an injury? Where would, where would, where would the Dolphins be? The same goes for um, the Kansas City Chiefs. Where would they be? If you just took Patrick Mahomes out, out the equation, where would they be? So, I mean, we ain't going to get into all that. I like to think most people that watch football and know football, and I am not talking about you got to be a super genius to know football and know how the game is played, if that makes sense. And know that it takes a lot to win a championship. It takes a lot to win a Super Bowl, if that makes sense. Regarding, you know, NFL football. It takes a lot to win a Super Bowl. It takes a team effort. Any key pieces to your team you lose, you're jeopardizing your chances of winning a Super Bowl, if that makes sense. And the Browns have pretty much lost most of their key players this season. Injuries to Deshaun Watson, who was out for the season. Injuries to Nick Chubb, who was out for the season. Uh, Denzel, Ward has been, Denzel Ward has been in and out the lineup with injuries. Uh, gosh, what's that? John Thornhill. I, I, I don't even know if he's going to play the rest of the season. They just had, got an announcement. I want to say it was Anthony Walker who's going to be out for the rest of the season. I guess he can come back in the playoffs, right? Uh, I don't know, but I, I, it, then, oh, gosh, what's that other dude, man? Oh, man. I want to say his name is uh, Jake Clock, C- Coughlin. I, I could be wrong pronouncing it. He's out for the season, though. That guy's been in and out the lineup since the Browns had signed him. He has not played a full season since he's been playing for the Browns. So, all these key injuries, right? And now Dustin, Dustin Hopkins is out with it. The, the Browns, um, dependable kicker. The, the guys have been having a career career year kicking the, kicking field goals this year, right? And he's out with an injury. And if you watch the game today, the Browns literally have to play. Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, was not necessarily um, in panic mode, but they. Couldn't, they couldn't execute their offense the way that they wanted to. They couldn't put the game away the way that it should have been put away uh, 
minutes ago. That makes sense. It should have. It should have came down to the backup for the Texas to come in and throw two touchdowns. And you know, for me, no, the game wasn't interesting then because I knew the Browns was going to eventually win. Um, all it did was prolong the game. That's all. Uh, but for what's his name, Davis Mills, uh, he came in and he threw. Gosh, I want to say he threw for 149 yards and two touchdowns. I ain't going to get into his completions because I don't care about that. But, yeah, he did come in and threw 149 yards and two touchdowns. Case Keaton, now I'm going to talk about his completions. He completed 11 to 17, but for only 62 yards. I think he had one sack. Man, no, he had a couple sacks. Well, the Browns had a couple sacks, right? Basically, Case Keaton was a backup. He's a backup for a reason. Is he, is he an okay backup? Yeah, but I, I kind of figured going in, come on, man. And I agree with one of the analysts in Cleveland. Uh, his name Tony Grossi, I believe. He called. He said he's a dink and dunk quarterback. What are we all stressing about this for? If the Browns apply pressure like they're supposed to, the Browns are going to win easy. And I agree with him. Just put pressure on Case Keenum. Case Keenum can't get the ball downfield. He's not, he's, you know, he's not notorious for throwing the ball downfield, making big plays to receivers, you know, in that capacity. So, uh, that's basically, yeah, all the Browns did was put pressure like they were supposed to. They were able to stop, you know, the short passes on those short completions, if that makes sense. Um, neutralize. They were able to neutralize. They were able to neutralize the short passing game for Case Keenum that makes sense, make sense and made him basically, um, oh, what's that word I'm looking for? Basi basically made him look inept at the quarterback position. But, yeah, okay. The backup, he comes in and throws two touchdowns, but it was against the backups. It wasn't against the starters. But, okay, yeah, the starters have to come back in because you don't, you still... Even at the end of the day, you don't want the game to get to a point where, yeah, it gets out of control. It's like a snowball effect, right? And then the Browns blow the game on, it, on epic proportions, if that makes sense. You don't want it to get to that point. So I understand why they brought the – no, I'm sorry. I understand why they brought the starters back in. I was about to say the Steelers. Can you believe that? I don't know why I got them, them fools on my mind. But uh, nevertheless – yeah, you don't want the game to get out of control. Let's just say it like that. So that's why the, the stars were brought back in, just to secure, just to secure the lead. I mean, just, I mean, secure the victory. So, uh, other than that, Browns controlled the game. They were, they got off on the Texans. They, like I said, they got a, they had a seven point lead in the first quarter. And I think in the. It might have been in the first quarter. Or, yeah, I think it was the first quarter. They got up to a 14-point lead, 14-0. Then uh, the Texans got a, a punt return. And that's what got them back in the game, actually. So it was 14-7, but the Browns still, you know, took control of the game. They got out to 21-7. And I believe uh, they, they they got a two-point conversion. I'm sorry, they got a two-point conversion. They led 22-7. So... Yeah, after that, they basically control the game, basically. So, again, it seemed like it was an easy victory for the Browns. Defense, again, played the lead. They were able to apply pressure. Uh, they held the Texans to a total of 250 yards of total offense, which that's always great when you can do that to another team, to your opponent. Hold them to a total of 250 yards. So, the Browns... Defense did step up. It traveled to Houston, and they played the lead today. Offense again. If you want to look, if you yeah, you gotta say the offense showed up and showed out. Of course, Cooper had 11 catches for 265 yards and two touchdowns. I, I, I want to say that's a record. A Browns record could be wrong. Um, how much? How many yards did Flacco threw for? Uh. I don't know why. They just don't put up these dudes' stats, man. It's just wild how they do this sometimes. Okay, Joe Flacco finished with 27 out of 
42 yards, I mean, out of 42 attempts. He completed 27 out of 42 attempts, and he had 368 yards passing and three touchdown passes. He did have two interceptions, but it was to no effect. It didn't, you know, it was it was like, okay, yeah, he threw two interceptions. The, other, the one interception he threw was at halftime. So, I mean, it, you know, it was pointless. It didn't hurt. Or should I say it didn't affect the Browns going forward. So, but all in all, the Browns played a good game today. I don't want to say super great. Maybe you can go as far as saying great. Again, they're 10 and 5 on the season. They currently are the fifth seed in the AFC playoff picture. I would like to think. I, I don't I don't know what's going on with the playoff seedings in the AFC. I, I like to think the Browns have secured a playoff spot now with this victory, but I don't know. I heard they have to win next Thursday to, you know, secure a playoff spot, which I find that kind of interesting because how they're not, you know, how did how did they not secure a playoff spot today when the Bengals lost? And, okay, even though the Steelers won, they both, the Bengals and the Steelers are both 8-7. and seven. The Colts lost today. They're eight and seven. So okay, yeah. So what if Buffalo wins? Who cares? Buffalo, even if Buffalo wins, all they can do the most, the worst case scenario for the Browns, I would like to think is they will fall to either the sixth seed or the seventh seed. So, and then they would have to lose their last two games for that to happen. So I'm, I'm not concerned. I know. I'm not concerned. I don't think the Steelers gonna continue to win. I don't think the Bengals gonna continue to win. I don't think the I think Buffalo gonna lose a game somewhere. So we'll see what happens going forward. That's all I have to report. Y'all take care. You stay blessed out there. You and your families. Facts from the Ghost the Podcast. Y'all also have safe, blessed, happy holidays with you and your families. One love. Later.